Perfect. All right. Today you're in for a treat. Our speakers are Robbie Rousey and Denise Abbott. Denise is a classroom teacher at Provo High School in um, Utah, and she also serves as the Utah HOSA State Advisor. She's been around for a while. In fact, she was a HOSA member in high schools. I always think that's, I always think that's a cute tidbit to share. And she is very creative in the classroom and you're gonna enjoy hearing from her. I think teachers really like to hear from teachers. And joining her is Robbie Rousey. And Robbie is a former classroom teacher. He now works with you Science. Um, they are our uh, assessment or certificate partners. And Robbie works in customer service and does a great job with that. He works some with uh, Utah HOSA as well. And he serves ex officio on the consortium executive council. They've been uh, pre-conference presenters for the National Health Science Conference. They've also been to some of your states and they'll tell you about that. You're in for a, uh, a treat today. So with that, here's the microphone, Robbie and Denise. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. So yes, that was that was probably a better introduction than I think we we're going to give ourselves, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> we will be um, sharing our email. I know it's on this first slide down here at the bottom. We'll share that again at the end. So if you want to contact and reach out to us, but, but just like Nancy said, um, <clears throat> we have been doing this for a while. We love helping teachers. Um, that's one of the, the things I love about my job. I'm not in the classroom as much, but I am still serving teachers and all of you that call into um, use science with formally precision exams with support help we're happy to to take care of you um, Denise and I we we were reflecting with Nancy just before the call started on uh, one of our first presentations was with the consortium back in 2010 in Minnesota and so um, that was one of my first introductions to the Mall of America and all that fun <laughs> stuff so we've we have a lot that we're excited to share today and we'll kind of get started into some of those different pieces here. So you can see there some of the places that we've been and um, we hope if it works out that you'll invite us to come to your state too. We know travel is still kind of weird, but it is opening up and we'd love to come and um, bring our full presentation. Today, um, we kind of took a straw poll and since we're headed into exam time, it seemed that reviews and how to help students review was very popular. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time on that today. Yeah. So as you see here on the screen, there's about 12 different activities that we want to do in an hour, um, actually 50 minutes now, if we look at the clock. So we're going to be going through them fairly quickly. Um, as Nancy said, this will be recorded. Um, we're, we won't be sharing out the PowerPoint at the end, um, but if you are interested in that, or if you're interested in um, having us come and present at one of your schools, states, um, district, whatever, you know, let us know, shoot us an email at the end, and we'll be happy to talk to each of you and give you more information about our services. We, we do um, have this information available on um, like a flash drive or, you know, to, to download. The numbers next to each of these different activities are in correlation with some of the um, material that we, we already have produced and that, you know, if you've used this in the past or if you've seen us in the past, you have the curriculum already, um, you can crosswalk this with a lot. If you have seen us, this is probably gonna be something that you haven't seen us do live as much. We, like Denise said, we wanted to find activities that are easily presentable via a Zoom meeting like this or a good review for this time of school year. So <clears throat> again, we hope that you enjoy each and every one of these. So with that being said, we're gonna jump right in. It's gonna be a little fast, a little furious. If you have questions, please feel free to use the chat. We'll continue to monitor the chat. Um, if some of those questions are more appropriate for us to answer towards the end, we'll save those. If they're more appropriate during the actual presentation or, or that activity that we're talking about, we'll definitely pull those up. We also wanna make this as much interaction as we can. And so that's, that's the whole point of activities in a pinch is we want you to interact. And so our questions to you are gonna be pretty much the same. What else do you do? How do you do a modification of these different activities or what are some other things that you're doing that relates to each and every one of these? So <clears throat> the first one we're gonna dive into is um, draw me word association. So let me go ahead and pull that up here on the screen. I'm gonna take this one and then Denise will take the next one because she actually just did the next one in her classroom this week. Um, so with draw me word association, it's exactly what it says, okay? We 
wanted to find fun, creative ways to help students identify and remember different keywords. Um, if we're doing medical terminology, in this case, this was uh, supine. And so we would just give a little piece of paper, maybe divide it into three or four boxes and have the students come up with three or four terms that they struggle with and then give us an image. And so this was one that one of my students did a while back um, for supine. They drew somebody who is lying on their spine and they can have soup poured into their mouth. So again, supine lying on the spine, just a fun word association activity again for those students to, to interact, to use their imagination. Um, Denise, how have you used this else in your class? Um, a lot with medical terminology. And I, I know really well that there's Kahoot and Quizlet and such, mm -hmm. but there's really value to have the students get into groups and to be creative. Um, we always go back to Cornell. We use Cornell notes a lot. Um, they have done so much research that if students will write and draw, they'll actually remember than just clicking on a screen. So yes, I've used this numerous times. It's also, we, we want to pull in a lot of HOSA events and activities. And I know some of the like the health poster and some of those different events have changed a little bit over the years, but this is a great way also to, for those students to practice some of those artistic skills. Um, you know, we always get those students in our classes and then we can, we see what they can do and we can help direct them in some of those other activities or competitive events that may be related to what they're doing uh, with their, their HOSA chapters as well. And the nice thing is because it's low tech, you always have it available in your classroom. <laughs> yes. Kind of the, the background story of Activities in a Pinch is the fact that we wanted to come up with ideas and things that you can do in a pinch. Okay. You have a substitute plan um, or an emergency come up where you have to create a sub plan for tomorrow. What are some things that you already have in your classroom? What are some things you could gather at the, at the dollar store? Um, usually when we go and travel and, and do these presentations, we always look up where's the closest dollar store so that we can find a lot of our, our materials and information to, to share with you. Because again, budget, time are two big things for teachers and we wanna make sure that these activities fit both of those needs. So the next one, like I said, I'm gonna let Denise talk to us a little bit about four bubbles. So four bubbles, as Robbie mentioned, I just used in my class last week. And um, we're preparing for the U Science Precision Exams midterm test. And on four bubbles, the first bubble, you put the word. And on the last bubble, the definition. The two middle bubbles are how the students can remember what that definition actually is. And so they had, we put them in groups of two in my classroom and um, let them, uh, we pulled those off from the standards and objectives for the test and then let them go to town. And some of my favorite ones there at the bottom there was thrombus. So they said it was a thrombus and that it was at a bus stop. And that helped them to remember that it was a stationary blood clot, not a traveling blood clot. Yeah. I love that they, they incorporated some, some pictures there, just a little artwork again, visual kinesthetic auditory learning. We can hit all of those different learning styles with our students. Um, it's really going to help it stick. I noticed Nancy um, on our last um, activity that we just shared with the word association, she mentioned, you know, the Dean Vaughn system, great system. Also, you know, using visuals. And so how can you um, take similar systems and similar programs that you're already using and, and bring that again into the classroom, getting that artistic side as well. And always activating what they know. So they know a bus stop. And so taking what they know and now throwing it into a new situation really does help their memory. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you see Denise's classroom there and those great examples. Also down here below, similar to what we saw with the word association, there's supine, it reminds me of soup and spine lying on one's back. Osteocyte, it has to do with bone, osteo cells. We can break up some of those terms. So you can make these even four, five, six, seven bubbles, if you want to break these into, um, you know, some of the various medical spelling terms. That was one thing that Denise and I, again, bringing back HOSA into this, is we recently had our state competition, and we went over the medical spelling, and it was sad to see how many students were struggling with those, those terms, but they just wouldn't break them down into the, the parts and the pieces of what the term is. And so again, an activity like this, helps them to, to break it down into 
what are the three or four or five parts of that medical term? And so it helps them also spell it better because now they're like, oh, osteo, bone, okay, I know that. Sight, cell, okay, I know that. And they can just spell those two words, combine them together and there they go, so. Perfect. Awesome. Our next one here is, oops, I clicked the wrong slide. Let me take us back here, excuse me. Um, there we go. Our next one here is the 631 headliner. So on this one, this is actually one that I'm introducing to our, our corporate office. Um, there's a lot of different ways to use this one, not just in, in health sciences and a lot of your different classes and review activities. Um, I pulled a, an example up here as osteocyte. So think of it this way. If you, if you read a newspaper, all you know, these newspaper articles, magazines, whatever, they start with some type of headline. You know, um, we go back to the Peter Parker, the Spider-Man, you know, there's all the headlines that the kids are, are interested in and wanna talk about. So how do we create those headlines? Those headlines are created based off of the content of that article. Um, so let's make a headline of today's class, today's lesson. So have the students help you with this as maybe an exit ticket. So first off, let's come up with the top six categories or things, items that we talked about today. It doesn't have to be six, it could be more, but let's come up with a list of how, what are, what are the concepts, the main concepts that we talked about today? So here in our class, we talked about osteocytes, osteoblasts, osteoclasts. Okay, we also talked about disorders and diseases that affect the bones. And one of those disorders and diseases that we talked about was osteoporosis. So again, students are throwing up different ideas at you at class on the board or in a chat um, of what you talked about. What was the main discussion? Okay, now let's summarize those things. If we look at osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and osteocytes, how do we remember these? Okay, well, three things, blast, build. Okay, those are our builder cells. Okay, class, what do they do? They are cleaners, okay? They come in, they help clean things up, make things smooth and nice so that the mature bone cells, those sites can now grow and function as they should. So then our headline is for today's lesson is osteoblast, building the future of tomorrow. All right, and that's, you know, the students have that one line, that, that takeaway headline of what they, what you learned, what was the theme of today's lesson. And we actually just used this in the medical anatomy and physiology class. And one of the headlines that stuck with me is that endocrine rules by blood. We had just finished the endocrine system and I thought it was great. So hopefully tomorrow they'll remember that those hormones are actually secreted in the blood. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any questions up to this point? I don't see much in the chat. What do you do that's similar to these activities that we've already mentioned? Um, I know Nancy uh, threw in there the, the, the Dean Vaughn. We've talked about this before. Um, is there anyone else? So please chat in or let us know what are some, some activities that are similar um, that we can do. Endocrine is a hard system to, to bring in. Yes, absolutely. We have some other activities that we do in person um, to help with that as well. Um, oh, I love that one. Christina says, I have them make a Giphy of the term. That's smart. Great way of introducing a meme or a Giphy technology again into um, the classroom. So awesome. There's lots of apps and programs out there to help you with that. So nice. nice. Great, great example. Keep those coming in. We'll, we'll read those off as we see, see some of those. Um, really quick one more. Amanda said that she used Legos and dry erase markers uh, similar to the four bubbles activity. I would love to know more about that. Amanda. Yeah. yeah. Let us know. Oh, there she is. She's showing in the picture. Awesome. Yeah. All right, give us some more on that. That's great. All right, Denise, one, two, three words and maybe the modified version. Yes, we like the modified <laughs> version too. So on the one, two, three words or the modified three, two, one words, we're again trying to get students to use definitions to get down to a term. So we usually have groups of three for this. And so students, if you do the one word, two word, three word option, the first student will, as you can see there, give, for example, the word the, and number two would be powerhouse of, and then the student three should finish of an animal cell to get back at mitochondria. We kind of like the three, two, one version where somebody would start with osteocytes and then you could say osteocytes are found, the three words, 
immature, two words, and then finally back to bone. But either way, what we're trying to do is get students to help with definitions in as few words as possible. Sometimes students get so hung up on language that they forget what the actual definitions are. And so trying to cut down the number of words is really helpful for students and especially our English language learners. Sometimes some of the definitions we give them, they don't even understand the definitions. So really consolidating helps. Awesome. Just to cut in really quick, we had a message. Is, are we still sharing our screen okay? Everybody see the screen? Okay, I'm getting a thumbs up there. So if you're not seeing the screen, maybe check a couple of your settings there if, if those aren't, if that's not coming through because it's looks like everybody gave us a thumbs up that the screen is sharing. Um, yeah, three, two, one, we put up here. Again, we've been talking a lot about these osteocytes. And so it's so fun. My, we drive a lot in our family. We, we have some family who are outside of the city that we live in. And so we drive to visit them. And my kids play this in the car all the time, whether it be about you know medical terms or, or whatever, but we just go around the car, the car and first person says three words, second person says two words, second person says one word, and we just create a story. Um, usually that story ends in some type of crude behavior or something like that, but it's still a fun way for them to create stories and to remember these different things. So sticking with the theme that we had before with osteocytes, osteocytes are is what student number one could say. Student number two could say whatever they want, but what goes along with the three words. So osteocytes are, and then I'm going to be like, uh, found in, and then these could say bones. So again, it's getting those students to participate and add and create their, their own stories along the way. And I think that's another huge point is that the interaction and discussion with the students often leads to a really good review that you didn't even attend to happen. Yeah, excellent. So <clears throat> just to take a, a couple of seconds, I we're our own worst teachers and we're fast talkers. So we're, we're going through this really fast. This is things when we're passionate about things, we tend to talk really fast and not go um, through all the detail. So I wanna point out some of the detail here on um, our curriculum that we, we produced here. Um, each of the different exercises or curriculum pieces are broken down a couple different ways. One based off of those core standards. Um, core standards are anatomy, physiology, medical terminology. We know that there's a lot of different people who, who teach, you know, biotechnology or other, other courses, and that's actually coming next. That's in the, in the works. But these are kind of your fundamental health science type courses, anatomy, physiology, med term. You should be able to find something that aligns with, with your different classes. The other things that we have, if you'll notice up here at the top, as we go through the different activities are... Um, the classroom application, okay? Some of those may be bell ringers or openers, um, ways to start your class, games, reviews. Again, you'll notice that today, the majority of what we're, doing, we're showing are reviews and assessment type materials. And then exit tickets. Again, this is a fun one. As the students are walking out the door, the first student out the door has to give you the three terms. The second student out the door has to give you two terms. The third student has to give one term and they just start over and go again and they go again. And, you know, they can't leave until they, they get those terms. Um, going to the virtual world, same type of thing within um, a chat. You can make those different assignments or have each of the different students pair up and, and provide those either in a chat or via your Zoom calls that way. Or so. Canvas discussions is a great place to put it too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> All right, elimination game. So this one for me, is a lot of fun. It gives us the opportunity to um, debate a little bit. And so that's why we've put here for HOSA. Um, this is a great practice activity and, and review um, that co coincides with the biomedical debate competitive event. Um, for this one, we, we've chosen a system. You could choose anything that relates to, to the different subjects or topics. And you could be in, in favor of or um, against you know, these different arguments. And so um, in this example we have on the screen, it says you are the blank system. So we could say you are the skeletal system. Um, or I could pick a, a group of students and say assign each of them a different system. So Denise, you are the, the muscular system. I'm going to be the skeletal system. And we have to argue with Nancy 
and, and Laura, we'll let, let both of our NCHSE ladies here, they have to decide which of one of us um, to keep and which one of us to get rid of. So that's where we come up with these convincing arguments to show you know, why we're the best system out there. For example, for bones, like you need me, I support your body. I'm, I'm your biggest support system that you have. So without me, you're just, you're just a lump on the ground, right? What about you muscles? Well, you can't move without me, so. Yeah, but you have to attach to me. <laughs> so without me, you can't have nothing to attach to. But you can't stay warm without my heat coming from mm. the muscles, so. Mm. But I'm also creating the blood that supplies you and makes you work. So without me, you're gonna die. <sighs> I need more research. So what's really good is that your students definitely do have to have more research to be able to make those valid arguments. And again, great systems review. I think you won. I think I won. <laughs> awesome. So just looking at the, uh, the board here, uh, students take turn rolling a dice. I love that Heidi mentioned earlier about the three, two, one or one, two, three activity, uh, rolling a dice and maybe that's the number of, of terms that they get. We actually have dice game on one of our things a little bit later on. So we'll have to pull that into that one as well. So thank you, Heidi, for that. Um, also works great for exploration of health careers. Thank you, Denise, for sharing that one. Um, awesome way of, of arguing out or putting out those different pieces that way. So <clears throat> great idea there. Great. Any other questions or, or thoughts up to this point? See lots of heads shaking. It looks like we've got some note taking going on and all of that. So probably, probably yeah. I had a question in the beginning when you had like the 3.1, you know, you had those, yeah. what did those numbers relate to? Great, great point, Nancy. So those relate to um, the different uh, versions of the curriculum that we currently have. So okay. um, we, we have, we have three versions right now, four and five are, are coming out soon. Just little teasers with, some biomedical or not biomedical, but biotech, okay. biotech and also some more HOSA involvement for those of you that, that use um, activities a lot or to integrate more students into your HOSA chapters. So, okay. so yep, Thank that's you. where those are related to. So, oh, we also see the Giphy template there. That's awesome. Thank you, Christina, for providing that. Oh yeah, so those of you that have access to the chat, Make sure you grab that link there that she shared out. And this is another, I'm going to put another plug out for um, Nishi and, and thank, you know, Laura and Nancy and also the, um, the Teachers Association. If you haven't joined that or if you're not on Facebook and part of those groups, they do an awesome job. I think Denise and I almost every night <laughs> message each other or see different activities that people are doing and mentioning on there that are just awesome. So another awesome resource um, that the consortium has really um, stepped up their game on and, and brought to uh, teachers and the, the Health Science Educators Association. If you need more questions about that, you know, be sure to follow up with Nancy or, or Laura about those and they can guide you that direction. So, Perfect. awesome. All right, our next one here is easy as ABC. So Denise, I know does this a lot in her class. I'll let her talk a little bit to us about how she uses that. So as I have review days, the, the couple of days before we get to the final, I actually print out the Utah strands and standards, that hideous objective page, and have them just kind of go through and highlight words that they don't understand. Keywords are hard. Sometimes some of the J words are hard because there's just not many anatomy terms juxtaglomerulus is, but there's not usually in our MAP, Medical Anatomy and Physiology strands and standards, not necessary for students to learn. So we sometimes make some modifications on that. But then what they have to do is go through and pick words they don't know, and then go through and we'll just use anatomy since it's sitting there. They, it's the book starts with the letter A, then they would write anatomy, the definition, and then they grab a picture from um, Google images and that way they have a whole ABC book of words hopefully they picked that they didn't know that now they know. The other way that we've used this in class is I hand out a sheet with A through Z and I might throw out a body system 
maybe the endocrine system. And so they have to list a word that starts with A and one that starts with B and one that starts with C. And, and it's kind of modified if you've played categories where you have to list everything with the letter S or everything with the letter J or K. And then we try to see who came up with the most unique words for that body system. And then here in Utah, we drink too much soda and there's a company called Sodalicious. And so I can usually get free coupons from Sodalicious. So we pass <laughs> out Sodalicious cards. Love it. I was just thinking like, like Z is usually zygote. I think that's about, yeah, the, only. about the only one. <laughs> so great for reproductive maybe and, and those systems. But again, fun, fun way to, again, you're not always going to have, like we just talked about, you're not always going to have a letter or a word for every letter, but um, I would do this as an end of, um, end of session review, end of, end of year review with my students and have them go through each system um, and just write down as many A words, as many B words. It's also a fun mm -hmm. um, back and forth activity because you don't have to just do A, B, C, D. What you could do is have two students go back and forth with each other or even a class and just say as many A words as you can until they run out. And then once that student, you know, doesn't have an A word, then they're eliminated. And then the next, okay, let's go to the next round. Next round is B words. And so they're going around the room and you get, you know, everybody's saying a different B word, B word, B word, and then again, you eliminate them out that way. So fun review game that way. And we've also done it with um, post-its on the wall mm -hmm. per body system, coming up with the different, as many body parts to those systems as possible. It's just a good way to bring back that knowledge that they kind of knew back in October, but now it's May and they yeah. need to remember it. Awesome. Okay. The other thing that I want to just point out on our things, Robbie mentioned the core standards in the classroom applications. Um, every one of them has a purpose, materials needed, guidelines, additional information, and every one of them has the answer keys. So you don't have to look very far. Yep. Yeah. Gives you, um, I love the materials needed because again, it's a quick thing I can look at and say, okay, what do I need to have either in my classroom already or go and buy or just consider a lot of these get on the review ones they're just simple activities that may require nothing more than a piece of paper which is one thing that we will be getting to a little bit later so if you have just a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper handy um, we're going to need that here in just a little bit so our next activity that we're going to talk about is press conference um, this one kind of relates to another activity that we're, we're not going to hit on too much today but I, I did throw it here in the PowerPoint, which is our raft writing. Um, maybe just by show of hands of those of cameras on or those are, are, are on chat. How many of you have used or are familiar with raft writing? Okay, Amanda has. Amanda. Awesome, don't see too many others. Okay. <clears throat> but if you um, have used raft writing, it's, it's a fun way to involve and we have a lot of activities and examples um, in our curriculum on that, that helps to show you some of those different uh, pieces. So <clears throat> this one, similar to a raft, is, is a press conference. Now, your HOSA event that could tie to this is prepared speaking or some of those even, even interviewing skills. There's, there's all kinds of different ones that can um, help tie into this. But with a press conference is, <clears throat> well, let's just look at the guidelines here again. Um, two to four students, have the role of a character. For example, a cell. They could have the different individual parts of the cell. Um, ribosomes, the uh, mitochondria. Man, look at me, I'm just throwing out terms like I, <laughs> like I still teach this stuff. But, um, or they could be, you know, the skeletal system. They could um, be a disease or a disorder. And they have to create a scenario relating to that particular carrier, character as to why they are addressing the class today. So they're the person up there in front of the class giving a speech. Now, <clears throat> the rest of the class is also involved. They have to know one, who is going to be the, the press conference individual, who's gonna be speaking to them so that they can create questions based off of that they can ask that person. Okay, so have the remaining class come and create their questions and <clears throat> those questions need to be um, some type of you know, interesting and informational or asking an opinion. So similar to what Denise and I did earlier with the elimination game, 
where we're eliminating um, each other based off of the different systems or how we relate, you know, to the body. In this case, you know, we, you are all asking us now like questions about the skeletal system or about the muscular system. And we are standing in front of the room as the press conference providers, you know, up here giving our opinions, giving our, our thoughts. So now instead of Denise and I battling, it's, it's the questions that are coming in from you and you're either trying to stump us or trying to help us regurgitate and, and provide information about why we are important or what we plan to do next. And, you know, those types of, of fun interactive questions. So how I've modified this in my classroom because some of my classes have 48 people in them. You probably have that too. So we've just divided body systems down. And so we have 11 to 12 kids in a group. So we do four sets of these at the same time so that there's more interaction with smaller numbers. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. One of the questions we had in the chat um, was for somebody who just made it a little bit late. We will be talking about at the end of this presentation, um, how you can acquire some of this information or get more about our presentation and what we, we offer. Also, again, if you're interested in bringing us to any of the different conferences that you might be part of, if you're on a committee or anything like that, let us know. Um, we'd love to be able to present more information on how we do that. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end. Perfect. So. All right, now we're into just some of the general uh, review activities. Those ones, again, were a little bit more specific. These ones can be any type of subject, nothing um, that you have to follow exactly. But this is the one we're gonna need a piece of paper for. So if you have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, grab that now. Um, if you don't, you can still follow along. Um, these are some of our foldable activities. Um, this is just one, a simple one that we love to do, but, um, in our curriculum, we actually provide a whole lot of different activities. Um, foldables are a fun, interactive thing that the students can do. You can still do, you know, virtually as well. But the main thing you have to know about foldables is the folds. Okay, so if you can see my video, I'm going to actually stop sharing for just a minute. All right. So if you see my video here, this is a hot dog fold. In case you didn't know that, think of it as a hot dog bar. You take a piece of paper. You fold it along the longitudinal axis there, I think I said that right. And basically whatever makes it look like a, a hot dog bun, okay? The other way that we're gonna fold is called a hamburger. That's gonna be more of the, the fatter piece of paper going along that 11 inch fold that way. So what I want everybody to do is practice those two folds, do a hamburger and do a hot dog. When you're done with that, your paper is gonna come out to be, um, have four sections to it. Okay, so basically we're making a quad out of our piece of paper. <clears throat> so do a hamburger, do a hot dog, and you're basically gonna have again, four different sections, four different quads for your piece of paper. Now, believe it or not, you just created one activity right here. Okay, this is a fun, easy activity. The way this activity works is you take your pen and you draw a circle right in the middle of the cross where those two quads come together, all right? Then you have the students place that hole or that pin circle on where? Their belly button, okay? So now we can start to identify the four quadrants. So what are in each of the different quadrants? If this is my belly button right here in the middle, what items, what organs are we gonna find in this upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant? Okay, lower right, lower left quadrant. So fun, quick, easy activity of, for the students to kind of identify. The other thing that's fun about it is it helps them to start to look at this as a patient. Because when I turn this paper over and I lay it down on the table to write on, what just happened? My right became their left, their left. Yep, I see Chanel's like shaking her head. She's, she got it, okay. My right became their left, their left became their right. and or whatever, vice versa. And so now that's as if my patient is lying there on the, on the floor. And so we're on the table and we're looking at those different quadrants that way. So fun, easy way for them to lay it on themselves and see, okay, these are where the quadrants are, but then also lay it down as if that's their patient who they're taking care of. All right, but let's keep going with our foldable. So we folded a hot dog, we folded it in hamburger. So we have um, all four quadrants there. 
The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to form fold the on the long end, this is really hard to do on a video here, <laughs> but I'm going to fold on the long end into the middle. So let me show you here and bring this section in. And basically we're making eight sections now. So we fold that in. Okay, fold this one into the middle. When I unfold this, it's going to look like a W or like an M. Okay, again, now I have eight sections. So one, two, three, four across the top, five, six, seven, eight across the bottom. Again, I just folded it so it makes either a W or an M shape. And that is how we get to have our, our, different, our eight sections. Okay, we're gonna fold this in half like a hot dog. Actually, sorry, I said that wrong. We're gonna fold this in half like a hamburger, my bad. So we're gonna fold it in half again like this. Okay, we're gonna take either a pair of scissors or we can just tear along the edge, the edge that's creased, okay? We're gonna tear down till we get to the second section here. So let me just show you what I did. I just tore down until I get to that second section here. And basically it, it makes my eight into um, separated right down the middle. Okay, following me there, hopefully, all right. Um, for this last piece, all I'm going to do is if you see this fold is going away from me and I still have the hamburger, sorry, the hot dog style fold. Apologize, my hands are getting in the way here. But as I come down, I'm going to create like a, a diamond shape. And I'm going to kind of combine this all together to make a T or a plus sign. Okay. So I went from here and I'm just going to combine that all to make a little plus. All right, hopefully you got that. And now when I bring them all together, I just brought all my edges together. So I took that plus and just decided which way I want to bring it all together. Now I have a little book. Okay, let me show my screen again. And let's see what this looks like here. So here is that, that final fold that I just showed. I kind of went on my hot dog fold. I already had my tear out, which made a diamond and I push this together to make a book. So this is what the page should look like. Now, this book, if you have your cell phone close by, it's about the same size as that cell phone. And we all know that students go nowhere without their, their cell phones, right? So this is a nice, easy, foldable little book that the students can write on and create notes on different units, different systems, um, different sections, whatever I have up here on our screen that says my muscle book. Um, so all we've done there is we've we've printed off on a, a sheet of paper. We've divided that piece of paper into eight sections and four across the bottom, four across the top. And then, you know, there's a little dotted line there so the students know where to tear. But then we go through the folding activity. And now when they when they open this up, they have this little booklet that they can um, write in all their notes and review and, and keep it with them. Keep it in their pocket right there with their cell phone. Now, one thing that we always talk about is, is when we're in a, a non-COVID year um, or when we're having some activities at our schools because those things are starting to happen across the country and you do this activity with your students, um, if they can, you see them at a, a sporting event or at a, a dance or somewhere and they produce this little booklet, let's even say some of us live in the same communities. We see them at the grocery store, okay? They produce this little booklet and they, even from six feet away, they say, hey, Miss Abbott, I have my anatomy book. And then you can say, great, yeah, send me a text, remind me about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and give you five extra points because you have your anatomy book on you and it's, it's right there in your pocket. And so that's another nice little thing about this is it's quick, it's easy, notes in the pocket that they can have for a quick review. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Practice think, folding. And you can see the number of uses for this one are, are huge. Um, I know Michelle Landers, another teacher at our school last year to have them review. She had one page per system and the students could write as much as they wanted to on the page. Yeah, so fun little activity to have. And the one fun piece about it is we do provide some, some templates as well as um, some resources as to where you can 
um, print these pages a lot easier. Um, so you don't have to go and create your own Word document that has eight sections, but we'll get you um, some links to have all that information right there and available to you. Awesome. Any other questions or thoughts? Again, please continue to send those out to the, the chat or let us know there if there's anything that you want us to um, expand more on on any of these activities. Looks like we have just about 13 more minutes. We want to save some time um, for questions, but we're going to jump through about three or four more activities pretty quickly. Um, this one, um, if you all remember, they've actually brought it back, the $100,000 pyramid game. Um, but this one is called Name That Category. Very similar to um, that popular TV show, $100,000 Pyramid. We, we feel like game shows and things that they can relate to are, are fun, but sometimes the, the Jeopardies and those get over, overran. We, we, you know, we can only do Jeopardy so many times. We can only you know, pull up so many of these different PowerPoints. So Name That Category gives them and you the ability to um, have clue givers who are helping a student try to um, say a particular term or a particular system um, by providing them with, with certain clues. And then throughout that, they move their ways up the pyramid and, and gain different points. Um, so again, fun way. It, it takes a little bit more prep um, on your side, a little bit more um, knowledge on the student side. So this is a little bit more of an advanced review activity because they need to really understand the terms and the, the, the definitions to be able to provide enough clues to help the students get to um, identify what the answer is. Um, so fun way kind of to, to get um, those activities out in that way. All right, and then Denise is gonna to talk to us a little bit about beach ball toss. So if you've gone to eNASCO, you've been able to find medical terminology and health and CPR first aid review balls and the idea is that you throw them and where the students catch them wherever their thumb is they are supposed to read the question and see if people know the answers so what robbie and i did was we took several state core strands and standards to find the most common re uh, common questions between those cores. And so we provided you with 100 anatomy review questions and 100 medical terminology review questions. And we just use beach balls that you can get at the dollar store and marker them up. And that way you don't have to spend the money that you would from eNASCO to get the ball. And again, the review questions come from the cores. They'll help your students to review for the last exams coming up. And it's really easy to use and fun. Yep. Super fun, easy activity. All right. Um, another one here we talked about earlier with uh, is called the dice game. So again, we had, um, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling back up through the notes here, the, the chat to remember who it was that um, it was Heidi that talked about um, earlier was we we're talking about the one, two, three. She had, hey, we could roll a dice to um, you know, play some of these games or activities. This one, um, we actually provide you with a print off that you can um, print on a piece of paper, your own die. And then with that die, you can put different terms in and then it shows you how to cut and fold and tape it all together so that it um, is a fun review activity. Um, we can put numbers on those, you know, just like a regular die. We can put different terms. Um, I love this one down here on the bottom where it's like, okay, on this one you have to list, you have to contrast, you have to compare, you have to verify, predict, or analyze, you know, based off of different um, systems or again, different, whatever we're reviewing and talking about. Um, those are fun ways that they can identify more different parts of the systems and, and whatever there. Um, we can put and have them roll like a number one and number one is related to, you have to draw a picture or if you roll a number two, you have to define this in your own terms. Uh, if you roll a number three, you have to use the term in a sentence. And so lots of different ways that you can incorporate dice and um, other, you know, these things into review activities. Mm -hmm. So great game, great review and that. All right, so we're wrapping up here. We got one more that we want to talk to you about, which is our flashcard seven up. Um, 
If you've ever played or remember the elementary game, Heads Up, Seven Up, this is one that the kids love because now you're bringing back that childhood memory for them too. They've hopefully all played it. We've all played it one time in our lives in elementary school, but now we're gonna use this with flashcards. And so you can get three by five cards. Um, you have one card that has a term, one card that has a definition. And so I'm laying down on my table, I have my thumb up and Denise has both cards. She has the term and the definition. She goes around the room with my head down and she lays down on my table next to me the um, definition for her particular term. So it's mitochondria and, um, or she has, you know, lays down the term, vice versa, you can do it either way. And so then she goes back up to the front and we say, okay, heads up, seven up, flashcards, seven up. And I grab my flashcard and I see, oh, powerhouse of the cell. Okay, and so I'm looking at all the people in the front and there's Denise standing up there with the term mitochondria. And so, because I know that's the term match definition then I'm gonna say, oh, Denise is the person who, who pushed down my thumb or gave me this, this flashcard. So that's how you would play your flashcard seven up. So, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And I, like I said, I know these work. I've used them lots and lots and lots of times. I used them yesterday and I used them last week. And anything that we can do to help those students just get back in the game and remember. And I think especially this year, they appreciate just a little bit more hands-on than previous years. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So like we said before, um, hopefully the information we provided today through this webinar, through this recording, um, is helpful as stuff that you can use right now in your classroom tomorrow, today, whatever you know you can. Hopefully you're all walking away um, from this presentation with something. And that's that's really the mission and, and what we believe in with our company and is that we want to help provide um, teachers, having been a classroom teacher myself and still supporting teachers, Denise still doing these activities in her classroom. We want to we want to help you with some of these unique ideas and tricks that, that have worked and what we found. And so um, one way that you can give back to us is, is just let us know, give us your feedback. Um, we have a QR code there or a link to a survey that we would just love to know what you thought. What are your feedback? What questions do you have? Um, what other activities are you doing and how are you incorporating these into your classroom? How do you incorporate HOSA? Like I said, that's one of the next areas we wanna be able to provide all of our teachers um, with those things and how they're bringing that in. Um, the other thing there is our email. If you have any additional questions or would like to follow up with us in regards to the curriculum that we provide um, with conferences and those different pieces, typically we, we, you know, we do have different prices and we can talk about those on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, in the past, when we've done these presentations with Nishi or with different states, um, those states, those agencies have been generous enough to, to pay for us to come out. And so we were able to provide the curriculum to our teachers, you know, as part of that, that resource, that service. So it's not like we come out and we charge you more. It's that's part of those, um, the ability of bringing us in and out to your different groups is so that we can then provide that to um, you all as teachers. So, um, but yeah, let us know what questions you have, or if you're interested in some of this information, um, more of the resources that we have available to you, that would be awesome. So Robbie, Melissa, Robbie yeah. Melissa had a question there um, about versions um, four and five. Yeah, so four and fives are in the works. Um, COVID threw a small glitch into everything for everyone, as, of course, but um, like we kind of teased a little bit, uh, we're leaning to, towards some biology activities and some um, HOSA related, more HOSA related activities to help your students um, prepare for the different competitive events that way. And August is our deadline for ourselves. So we hope to have it for the new school year. Yeah. Great. Other questions? We have a, just a couple more minutes and we wanna make sure we take advantage of the time together. But again, we appreciate everybody joining and um, you know, providing us with your feedback um, like Nancy said at the beginning, this is recorded. They'll, they'll have this posted on the um, consortium site. And if you do have any additional questions, you know, our contact information is there on the screen. Also, um, 
Nancy just put in there, and maybe she'll plug it, that there'll be certificates available for this from the consortium for your professional development. So um, Nancy, I'll turn it to you unless there's any other questions that we see coming in. I think I think that's it, Robbie. I just um, want to thank you and Denise. I know that you had to coordinate a little bit to be in the same place. And it is so nice to hear um, from teachers or uh, hear that you've used all these activities and I'm sure that they're going to be valuable to to the people who were able to be with us and to those who are able to go back and watch the recording. So everyone, thanks for being here. And um, we look forward to seeing you at future webinars. And uh, if you're interested in any of the other webinars, they're archived there uh, on our website. Um, okay, Erica, um, I, will, I have a message from Erica. If she doesn't mind, I call her out. She wanted to know, are the, are these lessons in the curriculum enhancements? Okay, Robbie, you want to speak a little bit? Oh, we're really talking about two different resources. But we are, yes. Yeah. So this is activities in a pinch. The, the enhancements are the, um, the information that's provided from the consortium. So yeah, two different resources, just like two different publishers. Yep. Yeah, but, um, but both are um, to help um, drive curriculum instruction for health science educators. So yeah. yeah, both great resources and with a lot of similarities, not so much similarities in strategies, but in, in content that you're focusing on as far as health science standards and host activities, that type of thing. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, our friends from Utah, we appreciate you being here today and um, we look forward to um, you having some um, great traction from some, um, I guess, some more fan club members that you may have created today. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.